Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays where it's time for your weekly update of our, our current Factorio Space Exploration and Crestorio 2 playthrough. And as ever the channel is sponsored by Trefoil.be so check them out, use the code Lawrence Plays to get your first month free and I'll tell you a bit more about them later. So what have I been up to? Well in the last stream I um, built space science again. Yep that was it but I'd already, I'd, I mean I did that last week so Overall, I guess I didn't actually accomplish anything. So, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week. No, I'm kidding. So, what? what last, last, the, the, I made some um, major changes up here, which um, have it, unfortunately have been sort of just rebuilding what was already there, but making it once again in a much bigger and more effective way, in a way that is going to be more expandable in the future. So, yes, I have got, I have built space, uh, space science once again, and got a, a machine up here producing the belts for them and then all the other inputs coming in here we're making them and we're making them at slightly faster than one every five seconds yeah one every five seconds which was the speed I was sort of we're sort of thinking about aiming for but we'll see how it goes as we get further on into the game so as um I've also moved the science labs over here so they're a bit more out of the way now so the um the science can flow around this way go up there and as you can see the, the uh, labs aren't all running, and that's because despite us producing these things at actually a reasonable rate, as you can see there's quite a lot pouring down the belt here in, now, um, we've got enough labs up here that they're actually being used up faster than they're being produced, which is a bit of a shame, but there's, there's a sort of a limit to how much we can sensibly do before it's just going to get a bit, before, we, before we're going to not, not be able to remotely keep up with that with the more advanced science packs. So there's no point in getting too carried away with the number of the lower level sciences you're producing, because if you can't keep up with, the, with that with the later levels, then there's just... It's just waste. It's just wasted infrastructure, essentially. So I'm probably not going to worry about that too much. Along here, I've also built up a, a small area that's making all of the different space belts. Space belts over here and space pipes over here. So um, we should have. We've got a nice supply of the belts being made, and that's enabled me to start making a proper main bus up here. Um, and we've also got a machine over here that's making the uh, the sca space scaffolding. So we can build. So hence, I've been able to build up this massive area around here. This was not all salvaged, salvaged out of the spaceships. This, a lot of this has been brought up from um, from uh, brought all the parts for it have been brought up from Norvis. So as I was saying in the um, I think in the last video, one of the things that's changed between 0.5 and 0.6 is that now we have to build things like the uh, the space belts, the space pipes, the space scaffolding. They all have to now be built up in space. You can't build them down on Norvis anymore. And so that's meant some extra infrastructure up here in order to get all of these things being being produced um, and it means we have to bring up all the parts for them so the the low density structures the heat shield tiles and, and the steel all need to be brought up in massive massive quantities so as I've, as I've been playing this I've been and, and as I've been setting this up we've basically been running out of steel all of the time because steel is required in huge quantities for everything and it's supposed to be on this belt down here um, <clears throat> but we don't have remotely enough of it so everything is just grinding to a halt all the time which is a bit of a shame um, that's why we're not making any more of the um, the scaffolding at the moment it's why we've stopped making belts uh, yeah, there should be steel oh, but here's here's a rocket here's a rocket um, supply coming in so let, since that's just landed let's talk about what's going on over here We've got the uh, the rocket landing pad. Uh, as you can see, all the stuff drops in like that in a huge mess of scattered stuff. We've got a lot of lube coming in by the looks of it. All of that then gets unloaded into this warehouse. On the bottom of the warehouse, I've got a series of a series of filter inserters that are passing stuff out of the warehouse into the next one, and those are controlled by this. Um, uh, combinator here. So as you can see we've got massive negative numbers of all of the things. Basically these are all of the things that are supposed to stay in this warehouse. You can see we've got the lube coming out here, we've got all the, the motor types of motors, all types of circuits. They're all pouring out of the uh, out, coming out of this warehouse onto the bus. So those things I've set up massive massive negative numbers and then linked all of that together with a green cable to the um, to the warehouse. And that means these inserters then get programmed with the things they should be unloading as it comes out of here. If it's not something that should be staying in this warehouse, these inserters are told about it they unload it from there into this warehouse here we have the same sort of thing again but this time it's the science packs so any anything it isn't a science pack that goes in here so as, as if we look at this we can see yes we're building up science packs but now the um, the low density structures and things like that are being passed off down this way so we're filling up with fill up the rocket fuel the low density structures and so on in this warehouse and then anything that isn't one of those things will go into this warehouse and at the moment this is this is a load of raw resources then down here we've got so again here we've got the coal plastic sulfur and so on and then down here we've got the same sort of thing again but at the moment I haven't finished setting this up yet because we haven't got we haven't filled up all of these belts yet so this is where all the miscellaneous stuff is going at the moment so we've got a lot of rocket sections we've got cargo rocket sections we've got drills we've got copper this is basically a bit miscellaneous 
but it's all the things that have been filtered out all the things that are left when you filtered out all of the things that are going onto the buses up here so in my previous run through in the 0.5 run i did this rather differently i had the uh, the rocket landing pad unloading into a purple chest and then left uh, and then had all of this distribution being done by bots and i don't like doing things like that with bots i don't like using bots for sort of main throughput of resources especially in this game partly because it's not the way i like to play factorio i think it looks ugly and bad and just generally not great but also because in space exploration you have um, robot casualty. Uh, what's what's the term for it? There, there, there's there's something there's interference which interferes with your robots and makes them fall out of the sky and explode. And so I don't want that to happen if I can avoid it because it's just another yet another expense. So we don't really want want them to do that. So I'm minimising the use of bots. I mean, sure, I'll use them to keep myself potentially use them to keep myself um, supplied. I'll definitely use bots for building, but I'm not. I don't intend to use bots for um, just moving stuff, moving resources around all over the place with admittedly one or two exceptions but in general <laughs> it's a it's a it's a fairly soft rule but it's something i'd like to try and stick to <clears throat> so we've then got out of each of these warehouses we've got the filters set up on these loaders so for example this one is set to um, low density structures so we've got a low density structure belt here we've got a steel belt and so on and so on um, and so those things are all flowing off to where they're needed we had, we did have water. We've got lube coming up here, where it's then unloaded by this machine into the into a lube pipe, where it's taken over here and used for making belts and anything else that needs it, like the uh, cosmic water. We did have water coming up, water in barrels coming up here, but I can get rid of this now because we no longer have barrel. We're no longer bringing water up in barrels. We've now moved into the sort of the next stage of that, and we've got the water being dug up from this ice patch here. I don't know how much there is. How big is this? so? There's there's 171,000 water here. So this is going to basically be a starter patch to get is going in the not too distant future we're going to need well there isn't there doesn't look to be any more any more resources up here in in, in in this orbit so we're going to need to go off to another planet that has cryonite work out the cryonite ice processing thing if we haven't already done so we might already have done so actually yes water ice we've um we've learned how to we've learned how to process cryonite and we've learned how to make water ice out of cryonite slush and water so at some point we're going to need to go over to a cryonite planet and start put, and start sending water over here probably by delivery cannon but then by that point we'll have used up this patch here so i can put a delivery cannon chest in here we just dump the water straight into this into uh, sorry the ice straight into here and it'll be, it can be melted into water for the things that require that now we don't so this means the water the, the water supply is currently sorted for at least 171,000 of it or 171,000 ice i'm not sure what's, what's what's the ratio um we turn one ice into a hundred water, so we've got we've got a million. We've got 1.7 million water in this patch, so that's going to last us for quite a while, I think. Um, but we are eventually going to run out, and we're going to have to start bringing that in. The lube is going to be a little bit trickier. We are, as, as you can see, we are bringing this up in barrels at the moment. Um, in the future, we'll we would, well, I definitely like to stop that. And there are two ways. To, there are two ways we can do that. So lube is one of the oil byproducts. So we can either start bringing up. Uh, we can find a way to bring oil up, but that's going to require spaceships because there's no way we're bringing up barreled oil. We can bring up coal and use coal liquefaction to turn that into uh, into oil and then turn it into lube and light oil and petroleum and, and so on. Or secret option, secret option number three, which I didn't do last time and I'm quite tempted to do this time, is to go out and find somewhere where there's a supply of methane ice, which might be somewhere like. Um, I'm not showing asteroid belts. So maybe potentially Kalidas asteroid belt might have some methane. It's got a little bit. Let's have, let's have a quick look. Some water ice there. Uh, there's lots of barrel and copper, <clears throat> but I don't see any patches. Of, I don't see any patches of methane ice. So no, we won't be getting any from there. What about belt two? Oh, that's a very methane icy belt. So if we look out here, probably stone, barrel, iron ore. Water ice, come on, <laughs> work with me here. Right, so having done a little bit more exploration, there's a decent chunk of methane ice. So perhaps the answer is going to be to come out here to Kalidas Asteroid Belt 2 and start digging up methane ice from here. Now it's it's a long way, but we may well still be. I, th I think we should still be able to set up delivery cannons here. The question is, can we get all of the, the resources we need in order to make the delivery cannon capsules? And with the methane ice to provide petroleum for explosives, we've got iron ore as well. We've got a little bit of copper over here, and there's some, I'm sure I saw some stone earlier. Uh, there's some stone. So we probably could actually set up a completely self-sufficient um, 
patch uh, system over here. Uh, in fact, we've got stone and methane ice and uh, it's water ice and copper. So we could well, actually we could send water ice from here as well. That might be a, that might be easier than doing it with cryonite, especially as we're going to need the other ones. So this is this is a possibility. We we could set up methane ice mining over here where there's a huge amount of it. Um, or we could have a look through all of the other planets that are available. Now, I I, ha I haven't seen methane ice on a planet before, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. We'll have to we'll have to see. We, we may we may well do that. But I think my current favourite idea is to go out to, is is to go to um, wherever we are, Kalidus Asteroid Belt Two, and start delivery cannoning methane ice from here once we've got delivery cannons up and running. So that's going to be that's going to be a thing. But for now, we've got we've got our water here. We've got our lube coming up in barrels. So we're we're okay for now. So we'll um. Yeah, that's it, it. It's a good start. So yes, this is working nicely. We, we we do keep running out of steel, but I bumped up the amount in the um in in the shopping list over here. It's now at five thousand. So we'll get we'll get a, we'll uh, get it loaded into the rocket whenever there's less than five thousand of it. So if we look down here, there is. Uh, let's sort this. Sort the warehouse. We've got one, two, three. We've got about three thousand, and and you can see that's dropping down fairly quickly as we make belts and and, and all the other stuff. We need a belt going all the way across here to take flat to take copper up to be turned into these um, into these pipes, and we're also going to need glass as well, which is this one. So, oh yeah, so yeah, put in the belts like this. I don't know why I'm bothering to do this, but it demonstrates the point. So we can put we can put in these um, extra little bits and pieces down here, and then and the bots will build it for me. And then we've got all the and now we've got all the stuff coming up here that we need in order to start building the um, building the space pipes in, um, which is the one basically the one ingredient we we weren't actually making up here properly in space just yet. Uh, okay, there's a missing underground belt as well. There we go. So now that should all that should all work. The only pro the problem with this system is that we are making the uh, underground belts incredibly slowly <clears throat> because they're being fed by the same. Um, there's one machine here making belts for splitters, underground belts, and loaders, and putting them into this box as well. So this is is, is passing them through rather slowly to this. I think I need to dedicate a single machine to making the underground belts for the underground belt generation. So that's the thing I want to tweak it so, uh, ne next week in, in order to get this working work a bit faster. Okay, so that's enough enough waffling about how I've set up in, in space here, because I think I've pretty much covered everything. Apart from to quickly mention that yes, I've started going around and, and reclaiming some of these deep space and deep space transport belts because it's 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 a bit of a waste using them for um uh for for trans just transporting stuff around here when to be honest, the, the normal space belts are more than fast enough for this sort of thing. So they can be reclaimed and put into a warehouse for later on when we actually need belts of that sort of speed for for something. I also returned that there were a few um, blue and green and uh, possibly even purple chests that we found in the spaceship and in this area up here that I've returned down to sent down to Norvis to allow other people to use them because I'm kind and uh, benevolent like that and also because I wanted to use one of them here for loading up the uh, miscellaneous stuff into the cargo rocket. So here we go. We see see the stuff that's been loaded into the into the rocket. Um, there are currently some problems with it um, because this inserter here. Um, is not loading. It, it, I haven't wired this one, this inserter up here properly in, in yet. But as you can see, once, once this stop that. <laughs> right. So once once this once we build the rocket, that then turns all that then allows the signal of what's missing to be passed down to here, and it allows all of the stuff that we need in the rocket to then be passed up. So we can then load the rocket up with with more lube, with more all of these different things that are sushiing over here, sushiing in over here. There's loads and loads of stuff. We just pour that, all of that into the rocket. It fills up quite quickly with an absolute mess of stuff, but it works. It works quite nicely. So that fills the rocket up with all of the stuff that we're that we're demanding from in space, and eventually it'll fill up completely, and then it'll automatically launch, and we'll have some more stuff up there. And hopefully we'll we'll uh, we'll get another load of um, steel coming up before we run out of what we've got up there at the moment. So this is ticking over quite nicely. I've put in some additional barrel manufacturing machines over here because the lube wasn't coming through quickly enough. Because this machine can load barrels with lube much faster than this one can uh, than, than one of these machines could make them before. So now we've got a nice stream of them coming up here. So we've got lube coming through a bit more quickly. Got a nice flow of assembly machines coming through as well. Life support packs, those that's working nicely. As you can see, the, uh, the water barrels have been completely stopped now because we have a better supply of water up up in space. So I've turned that one off. 
and I've also moved the uh, shopping list from over here where it was f feeding directly into this into the system from down here up into space and that's good because that means if we lose power in space then we'll stop sending down any signals at all uh, which means the shopping list won't be sent down whereas before if the shopping list was down here if we lost signal then we stop sending down the list of everything that's already in space and it would just seem like to the shop to the system like there was absolutely nothing up there so it would try and send through everything that's on the list so it's important to have the um, have all of that at the other end where so all the signals come from the same place so I think that probably covers everything I've done it's um, been a bit less bit bit shorter than normal but that's because most of what I've been doing has been tearing down and rebuilding all the stuff I did last week it's now in a much more a much neater and more expandable way we've got the standard um, bus set layouts down here we've got sort of belts coming out in fives from each of these warehouses because that's the distance you can go un underground with a space underground belt um, and then up here we've got we've, this this bit's a little bit untidy but I didn't quite leave enough space for the liquid so I'm I'm sort of I'm regretting that a bit but I didn't but there, it's a bit squeezed because this this machine kind of, I had to fit this machine in on on the um, on the on the rocky area um, because it was needed to make all of the scaffolding and I wanted to make sure it was in below the water, where the area where we're digging the the, the ice up for making it into uh, into into water. Um, I didn't want to overlap the ice patch too much, so it pretty much had to go there. And I didn't really leave enough space before I started doing the rest of it. Now I might consider moving some of this stuff up a little bit, or I might just go from here on. I'm going to build a little bit higher up, so there's a bit, a little bit of room underneath for any sort of anything next extra that needs to be added onto the bus partway along. But basically, this is now neater and generally happy, and I'm. I think that I think that's working quite well. Uh, we are going to have to change the uh, the labs at some point because, as you can see, these will take will take the next three packs that we're going to make: the optimization tech card, utility science, and production science. Sure, but after that, once we get onto the tiers and the colours, we're going to have to replace these with a different type of lab. Um, where I'm, how I'm going to get the science back here, I'm not quite sure yet. It might have to run back up along a belt down here and then punch its way up through here, um, which is going to be a little bit awkward and a bit spaghetti. We'll have to see how that goes. I may have um, not planned for the future well enough there, but um, I'm sure I'll come up with something. I can, I'm can. i reasonably resourceful when it comes to spaghetti. <laughs> oh dear. <clears throat> so that's enough about me. Let's have a look at what Tristan's been up to. As usual, he's been working hard with all of the trains around the base. So, um, starting off with, um, he's he's improved the uranium pickup. That's over here. Yes, he's, he's extended this to, to all be uh, to be long trains for the uh, for the for the cold uranium, but still only a short train for the spicy stuff because we've only made like 200 of it so far. Um, here we've got most of a train, and that can now be brought down. And I believe it, I was told it could be put onto the bus. Yes, so here we go. We've got dull uranium can go onto the bus here, which. It looks like we put some on. I don't know where it's gone or what it's been, why it's been put on, what, where, why it's, what it's been put on the bus for. But there's a load of it here um, that just travels all the way down here, and as far as I can tell, doesn't get used for anything. Maybe it's going to be used for ammunition at some point. That seems like a likely use for um, for, 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 for dull uranium on the bus. Um, oh yeah, here we go. Yes, it's being taken up here. So now we're t turning. That's interesting. Um, all right, so to make uranium ammunition takes uranium and ammunition. It doesn't take. It's not an upgrade from the um, from the armor piercing ammunition like it is in vanilla. That's quite interesting. Um, I don't think we're using that for any of our defenses yet, but we are. We are just putting. We're just putting it into a box for uh, people to grab and go off and do you know military stuff themselves with. So the military train up here is actually not filling up with any kind of ammunition at the moment so I'm not quite sure what's going on with the with the military at the moment but that's kind of well I'm on a different planet so well at least I'm off this planet so I don't really care too much exactly what they're doing um, as long as the as long as the um, steel keeps flowing upwards and then the plate and the base doesn't get eaten I'll leave that up to them oh I've looked at the wrong thing but never mind that was a relevant thing to talk about it was here that he's upgraded from a short train to a long train so we've now got four warehouses across here with 1.4 thousand oh, nearly getting the three quarters of a train's worth there, so it's it's gradually filling up. And as you can see, there is a trickle trickle of it coming out of the core processing. So eventually, we will have a train's load here, and it'll be worth taking it away. He's done the ghost train system, which I shall explain in a bit more detail in a moment because it's it's a big old big thing of its own. He's made recycling facilities on the bus, probably down at the end, I expect, because that's where things tend to... Yeah, down down the end here, he's made recycling facilities, and that's important, partly because we'll need a few of them up in space. We need to, we're going to need some for recycling scrap, but mostly because that has allowed us to get this system up here for pulling out excess ores and turning them into landfill. So across here, we've got the... Um, 
We've got four, four recycling machines that will turn or will turn their own specific types of ores into landfill, and they're all being filled up by these splitters and um, and then loaders push, push, passing it all in. Now, the only problem with this is that um, up here, this this system, when it does, when we do have an excess of something, is not. There's only one stack inserter here, and well, look at the look at the rate everything's coming in at. If you imagine we had had an excess of any of these and it was building up in here, how on earth would we do anything with it at all uh, with a single insert, stack insert? It, the answer is we we can't really. What we need to do here is put in a loader and have the, and be able to set the filters on it in the same way that we're currently setting the filters on this. Well, this filter inserter, um, but unfortunately, that's not a thing. You can't set, you can't, you can set a filter on a loader, but you can't run a cable into it to get it to specifically um, behave itself and load and only load certain certain things in. It will always have the, exactly. It will always have the filters that have been programmed into it. You can't program them, them separately with an, with, a, with an external en anything. So I guess what we've got instead over here, we've got this system where we, we've got another a storehouse that, the, the, um, that all of the, the rare metals or ore is going into, because that's the one we've always traditionally had too much of. And then the standard thing here that's going, well, if, there's, if this is basically full, then dump it out this way, otherwise just keep sending it on that way. So if it does overfill, we'll, we'll be dumping that one out into here. The rest of it, we'll see. I mean, at some point in the future, if this becomes a problem with any of the other ores, we'll either put in another system like this for each one, for the, for the iron, for the copper, for the stone, or alternatively, we'll come up with some other system for dealing with it. But at the moment, this is, it, it's kind of okay. But the, um, the the rare metals have started to flow again because over here um, we are, we have we actually do have them running through being processed turned being turned into rare metal ingots and then occasionally one of these trains will, will trundle off at the moment we're just building up a buffer in this warehouse uh, storehouse but eventually sometimes this train will trundle off and, and unload them to be made into blue circuits or I think that's about the only thing they're actually being made into. Oh, and while we're over here and I've noticed it, I should um, please say, everyone, if you're, if you're enjoying this video, if you're enjoying the videos in general, please make sure you've uh, subscribed to the channel. I've, uh, I know from YouTube stats that only about half of you have, so um, if you are in the half who haven't, please make sure you subscribe. It'll help the videos out enormously and, and, and help, help me get boosted to more people who'd like to see them. Tristan also added in a massive quantity of the uh, more of the uh, pulverizers over here because at one point we had a massive backlog of uh, core fragments building up in the warehouses here because uh, they were being brought in by train so quickly and I'd screwed up the system up here a bit and then fixed it afterwards but there's still a backlog. Um, he's now taken it a bit far the other way so we've now got far more machines than we need as you can see by the fact that we've basically used up all of the core fragments that are available. Um, but We'll probably have more in the future, and it's better to have too much infrastructure than not enough. So, I can't really criticise him for that. It's it's not it's not a problem. It's just that is an enormous field of field of pulverisers, and it's a little bit excessive. <laughs> um, but you know, it's working well. It's dealing with all of the core fragments we're able to make, even if it's massively overspecced for that number. Uh, he's also let's see, he's done a, a few other minor things. He's made industrial furnaces, probably with some horrendous spaghetti around wherever I was making the furnaces. I can't remember where that is, but let's just take. Oh, here we go. Yes, industrial furnaces. Okay, that's not too bad actually. He's, he's managed to um, spaghetti in a belt of. Uh, oh, he's, okay, he's, he's emerged them down here, but he's managed to spaghetti in a belt of, of concrete and blue circuits up to here in order to make the uh, the industrial furnaces. And at some point in the future, these are going to allow us to do some major upgrades to the smeltery area. So <clears throat> this is the next tier up. They're a better furnace than the electric furnaces because they've got more spaces for modules and they're probably faster, uh, which means we can put in more productivity modules and get more out for what we're putting in. They also allow us to then move on to the um, vul vulcanite met processing, which is um, or ingot processing, which is where you 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 put some uh, vulcanite into the. Um, no, we haven't, because you need to do vulcanite processing, then you can do pyroflux smelting, and that enables you to make molten copper and then make that into ingots, which is again another boost to uh, productivity. You get even more stuff out than you put than you put the metal, the ore in beforehand. It makes makes the process more and more and more efficient. So we're going to get a lot more out compared to the amount amount of ore we're putting in, which might you never know might get to the get us to the point where this uh, stream of um, free ore that's coming out of the core fragment processing is actually sufficient and we can stop actually if we look over here it is sufficient for copper the copper has stopped flowing through here the iron has stopped flowing through here we've actually actually this is all stopped completely i'm not sure what's happening here it looks like we've got an, an acid or a water problem there's, there's enough of that there's plenty of water okay we've run out of acid so that's the problem here 
uh, that's why we've stopped processing these metals. It's not because it's not because not actually because we brought in enough in the form in, in these forms. Um, but the stone has actually got to the point where we are base we're hardly using it from from the mines. So that's that's pretty good. Things are in general going quite well. And if we can bump it, push in a little bit more efficiency or productivity with modules and things, then we might get to the point where we just no longer need to bring in or uh, quite as much ore from the mines as we have been up until now. And that'll be rather nice because these mines will eventually run out there's okay there's a million left there there's five and half a million there there's two million there and, and so on but these mines will eventually run out the core mines will not run out they will keep running forever so we can it's, it's it's free resources so if we can get to the stage where the base is happy to run just off the free resources then we're doing really really well and we we can just and and we don't need to go out rebuilding new mines all the time going out liberating new territory from the biters all the time we can just run literally off just off the free resources and that'll be very nice tristan also went out and did a bit of a bit of the fighting because micus has enough, had enough of it and wanted to do some actual you know building for a change uh so he came out here did a load of did a load of fighting killed killed off the uh, i think he got basically he's cleared out cleared it out to the point where we've got no biters left no biter nests left inside the area that we're planning to claim which is across there and across there except for one little nest here that he didn't quite have time to finish off so he's doing quite well but he did actually he did this he did this did lead to his first death so we now have all managed to die at least once so um f in the chat everybody but he's um yep we've no longer um <laughs> no longer got someone who's managed to not die throughout the entire game <laughs> but yeah there's a, a tiny bit down there that needs fixing so now we're going to get on to the sort of the bigger and more complicated things that he's been doing and i almost wonder if i should do a separate video for these but um i'm going to summarize them fairly quickly now and then talk about it and then probably make a uh, make it make it make a, a specific tutorial video about the about the ghost train system because that is quite cool so the first thing is the oil pri oil train prioritization so at the moment we have an area down here big oil which uses well lots of oil had lots and lots of oil comes in here to this station gets pumped through and gets turned into everything we need that's made from oil great <clears throat> we have a number of oil mines like this one which digs up digs up oil puts it into tanks trains come out they grab the oil they bring it over to big oil to be processed great now the the funny the bit that makes this less less trivial is that over here we have an additional oil mine for want of a better word um, where there's a bit of oil is produced by the um, by the core fragment processing and that's put down into this station here and this needs to be used by priority because if this fills up then eventually the, the oil will back up all the way back up into the core fragment pulverizers and these will stop running and we'll stop getting all of that juicy free ore I was talking about. So we need a system where trains will come out to this station if it's got enough oil in it instead of going out to the other stations around the around the rest of the map. So the way this has been arranged, and this is slightly complicated, so I'm going to talk about it a little bit more slowly than I normally would and if I go wrong and have to correct myself I hope you'll forgive me. So we have a system here where the station is connected by red cable to all of the tanks over here, although it is done through this, um, through this, through some logic over here. So as, as I've talked about before, what, the way this works is it negates the number that's come, being passed through, and then it adds on 150,000 to it, um, and then it divides that the, that total by 100,000. So if when when oil is dropped off here like this, we'll get an amount in these tanks. If that amount is greater than 150,000 then we'll have a negative then it'll be negated here so and then add it to that so if, it's, if there's more than 150,000 in here we'll get less than zero coming out the other side if we've got if we've got none in here as is going to be the case quite soon so that's these things we've got basically none in there so on there so we've got an output of minus 7,000 there so onto this one that means we've got 143 coming or 144 because we're adding on the amount here that's then being divided by 100,000 so if this amount is over 100,000 that is, if there is less than 50,000 in this station, then we'll turn this station here on. By, because we're passing the L into it, that's the train limit. So if there's less than 50,000 in here, the st station will turn on and it will start to accept trains. There is then another uh, combinator here, which is looking to see if there's less than 10,000 in, in the station. So um, at the moment, so that's the, on, by default, we're saying yes if this is less than 50,000 it's saying hey I, would, I need some oil please bring me some oil and so if at that point if there is if there's a full trains worth in this station in the oil pickup station here a train will come over grab it and bring it over to here to unload it and we'll get some more oil great 
The clever bit is that we also have a system here where we're watching to see how much oil is in there. And if it's less than 10,000, then it outputs a signal of one oil onto, the, onto this red network. And that's the one that's connected to every single station at every, anywhere in the entire factory. So this red cable goes from here, goes all the way down here, all the way down the middle of all of the tracks. And eventually gets to uh, this oil station up here. It's then fed into here and this looks at the oil signal on the network so to see if there are any stations out there asking for oil. If it's zero, so if there's no stations looking for oil, it outputs 1L which then gets negated by this one to become a minus 1L. So it's saying if there's no stations that are really short of oil and asking for more, then output minus 1L which will then cancel out the L that's produced by this, by this station here having enough oil for a train to come in. So this is a bit complicated, but basically it means that if this station has enough oil, it tries to it produce it put, puts out an L to say yes I've got enough. But if there's nowhere on the on the network that's specifically really really low and asking for it, then it'll also output a minus one L, which cancels that one out, meaning you get a zero. But if there is somewhere that's really short, as there is at the moment, then the L makes it all the way through, gets to this station, and you set your train limit. That's really complicated and really hard to get my brain. I mean, I understand it, but it's quite hard to explain and properly get my brain around. So if you want me to make another video talking about that, let me know because that's, yeah, I'm not sure how well I explained that. I might need to actually write a script and make sure of, and, make, and, and talk through it that way. But essentially this means that, what this means is that if, there, if the, um, if big oil is just running happily um, and then starts to run a bit low, it'll, it'll like request oil from this station over here by the core, mark, core fragment processing. If the core fragment processing doesn't have any oil available, then big oil will carry on running and eventually will get very low, at which point it will then call for oil from absolutely anywhere, so it will then bring oil in from the mines. So once again, this is a system that will use the um, use the oil first from the high priority places where it's coming, where it's absolutely free, before it then pulls it in from the more expensive places where there is a limited supply of it. As you can see, there's only 8.7 million there because in Crastorio 2, oil fields are not infinite. And again, once again, there, so there's two reasons for doing it like this. One is because we need to use up the ex, any excess that's generated over here from the core fragment pulverization in order to make sure that it doesn't overfill. But then secondly, we don't want to use it from over here unless we have to, because this is a limited supply. Okay, I think that covers that reasonably well. I, as I say, I hope that made sense. Let me know if you let me know if it didn't, and I'll talk about it. I'll, I'll write a script and talk about it in a bit more detail. Ha. To be fair, Tristan has also said it might be worth neatening up the oil field end to use a decider combinator to only pass the limit through if there's oil on the red network. Um, that makes does make sense. It would make it a little bit more. Um, Easy, it'll make it a bit easier to think about, so that's probably a good reason to do that. Maybe he'll do that in the future, and if he does, if we, if I do make any sort of video explaining this, hopefully he'll have done it before I do that, because that will make it a little bit, yeah, it makes it a little bit easier to think about. The other thing that Tristan's done, and I touched on, touched on this briefly in the last video, um, and I'm again, I'm only going to touch on it briefly in this one, partly because I've already been recording for quite a long time. But also because I uh, don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to go on about it too much when I I still haven't I haven't written a script that'll tell me how to make sure I get everything right. So down here we have the ghost train system, um, which I touched on briefly as I say in the last video. The idea of this is that you go out to somewhere where you want to build something, you put down the ghost of the blueprint or the blueprint of everything you want to put down there, um, and they put in some robot ports, and then you link them up to a transmitter. The transmitter sends a signal of all the bits and pieces it needs over to this receiver. Um, and then that can be output to here. We have, have, then have this blue strong box that will request all of the things that are needed for that, puts them into the train, and the train can then go off and do the building. Um, there's a lot of circuit, circuitry in here to make sure that that all works nicely. Oh, and I should probably mention that this requires the, um, the Ghost Planner mod as well. So this is, this is another mod that we're playing with because it looks like fun. Essentially, this system allows you to put down a blueprint and then have a train bring out all the stuff that you need in order to build that blueprint without you having to try and remember everything, go back and forth, put it into a train, bring it out yourself, any of that sort of stuff. It just all happen automatically. And this is an interesting enough thing that I'm going to make a, make a separate video about it once it's definitely finished and polished and all, all working because um, I think this it, it's big and interesting enough that it deserves its own video. So that brings me to the end of uh, what Tristan's been up to, uh, and also what I've been up to. Tomorrow we'll have a look at what Mike and Mark have been doing. Um, I know there's been some sort of 
weird and interesting things going on with extremely long belts in there. So we'll um, that'll be in interesting to cover and touch on. So uh, yeah, come back for that and uh, tomorrow. And of course, there's all the other stuff on the channel. There'll be the stream of what we're uh, getting on with this every Monday. There's the um, uh, Dyson Sphere program stream on Wednesdays and the catch-up videos at the weekend. And you know, there's a few other videos coming out here and there now. I've started to find better ways to produce things that don't don't uh, take up all of the time in the world. So uh, yes, there's always lots going on on the channel. So make sure you're subscribed and uh, I hope to see you next time. And as ever, this channel is sponsored by Trefoil.be. Uh, so if you go to Trefoil.be slash Lawrence Plays, you can get uh, your first month of a, of a game hosting server absolutely free. And they've also got a competition running at the moment in, in October for, um, for Halloween, where you can go in and uh, look for spooky things on their website. And if you find them all, you'll be entered into a prize draw to win another three months free. So you get both of those. That's your first four months absolutely free on the, uh, on, on the, on the site. So that's definitely worth going for, I think. So, thank you for watching. I hope we'll see you tomorrow for the other half of the video, and um, enjoy the rest of the channel. Bye-bye.